Hello there, Roland Nation. My apologies for interrupting the show and music, but as you can see on the screen, there are many Twitter and Instagram handles displayed. These folks contributed on the fan art Twitter posts that I made previously. Feel free to follow them. Additionally, type in exclamation mark artists and you can get their links directly to follow them. Full credit to the artist about to be shown. Show is starting soon. Sit back, relax, get a drink, and enjoy the music and artwork. Thank you so much. All right, and it looks like we are live and ready to go. Um, George, thank you so much for joining. I really do appreciate it. It's uh, very, very kind of you to uh, to uh, to join us on the stream today. I appreciate it. It's, it's an honor, Sam. Thank, thank you. So uh, for those who have um, never seen you or um, know what's going on, why don't you give yourself a, a little bit of an introduction? Tell us all about you. Yes, um, you might occasionally hear mad noises. It's my my two cats. Um, so not really an interview interview just with me. Um, <laughs> uh, I I uh, I'm probably best known to people watching us now uh, for a um, well an an NPC uh, for <laughs> an NPC called Roland. Um, and uh, that was four years ago. I think we started work on it. Um, yes, but uh, but aside from the master of Ramesses power, I have also um, I've, I'm trying to think of the verb here: trodden the boards, mm. past participle of t to tread um, at a few theatres in London um, after drama school, and uh, appeared in some TV and and, and film as well. Uh, over, well, I don't like to talk about my age, but um, 
13, 14 years. Let's let's call it something like that. That's um, it's a long wind, uh, long winded uh, experience there. I've noticed you mentioned that uh, you mentioned drama. I mentioned that um, a lot of folks who were involved with Baldur's Gate three were sort of in live performance drama, and that that was the same with you as well. Yeah, I I mean I'm playing it. I it's not my. I'm going to be completely honest with you. It's not my um, go to. I I will caveat that by saying I am a very very proud. I mean, I did a, I did a podcast with um, funnily enough with the, my voice agent because she she's been very proactive and has done this sort of series of, of podcasts. But I, um, I even just during that podcast, I was sort of it was almost like a therapy session. I was saying, you know, and I, I, I I'm a gamer. She was like, okay, but it's because growing up, I don't know, I sort of, um, and as a, a fully fully grown man, um, sometimes you know, there's there's still parts of completely not anymore. It's all in my mind. But there was definitely earlier on in my life, it would be sort of like you're you're still gaming. So anyway, <laughs> so I've um I, I but with with Baldur's with Baldur's Gate, I um it's I I have some friends who played the first and the second one. Um, and were passionate about it, so I knew it was a I knew it was a really special um, thing. But I, it's not my go to sort of uh, role playing kind of fantasy. Is not my sort of. Uh, I normally prefer strategy and sort of um, yeah, kind of Red Dead, Red Dead, open world, that kind of thing. Mm. Um, Long winded answer to, I eventually got round to playing it because. Um, I was lucky enough to be involved, as is the often the way with actors or voice actors, with with a great project, which we, as 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 your brilliant um, brilliant previous guest, or the, one of the previous guests that I saw um, who played Raphael, um, mm. was 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 alluding to, is, is that you have absolutely no idea of of, of whether um, it's going to be popular or not. Um, but I I started playing it uh, live streamed which again new experience because there was so much uh wonderful uh community and um engagement and uh passion and excitement and and you, you before we we started this interview you mentioned that there's some fan fan art flooding in i mean it's 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 incredible it's so nice to be able to say that and not just be trying to spin or sort of you know sort of make it up it's it, it's it's genuinely amazing um so i started playing it and the i'm coming across one by one um the other characters so on when was it uh yesterday i, I came across uh Damon, uh played by fraser and it's, you know really good really fantastic um and i don't know you know i haven't come across Rafa, Raphael. i a lot of the characters haven't come across yet and it's incredible because you do i do come across them and each time the let the i see why people have been so great um and enjoyed it so much because the, the performances are, are pretty pretty amazing so long answer to your to your question yes i think they've cast it brilliantly haven't they they've cast it brilliantly and they've obviously um found just the right people you were you were kind of mentioning one of I've made an appearance. <laughs> um, yeah, one of the things that kind of just jumped out at me in that uh, answer there was you mentioned that a while ago saying things like, um, "Oh, you're still being a gamer." There was quite an evolution throughout time. There was a time period where um, Dungeons and Dragons specifically was seen as like something that was. Um, associated with something bad and then there was a group where uh, D&D kind of moved on into sort of like a subsection you know uh, it was kind of a nerdy geeky thing and then as time moved on again it's sort of like it's it's sort of normalized it's really really cool to be involved in these um, strategy and uh, you know Dungeons and Dragons it's becoming actually quite uh, popular and with the fan art specifically that you were mentioning too, I've noticed really quickly that there's an umbrella, and that umbrella is Baldur's Gate. And underneath this umbrella is so many subsections that are directed towards the characters specifically. You know, on one side you'll have the 
Astarian fans. You'll have the uh, the Raphael fans. Uh, you'll have the Roland fans, but they're all underneath the one umbrella that is Baldur's Gate. But there's a really dedicated group to each uh, to each character, and I've been noticing that very, very quickly. Yes, and um, yes, and then I, I I made the uh, decision to uh, in my playthrough to by mistake kill um, Astarian. So I've seen the fallout. I've seen the fallout from that. So and the the loyalty of of as you say of the different camps. I've seen it in 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 tooth and claw. Um, you were mentioning that um, you were playing this live and posting it to YouTube as well. Um, and that incident, I did see that incident. I stopped by uh, your streams the last couple of times. Um. How has uh, live streaming the game been? How is posting everything on YouTube like that journey? I mean, I'm still, to be honest, in the sort of foothills. Um, I mean, I don't want to be too kind of uh, um, oh, kind of, you know, uh, but I, I have, I can only say that I'm passionate about the gaming, so that 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 that's always there. You know, I'm fortunate in that sense that. Um, I was involved in such a project. Such a project had such a um, a response, um, and had such a community. And then, um, it, it's been for me a wonderful opportunity because I've, I've, I've some friends of mine have said in the past because you know I love gaming, um, and I'm a you know a PC gamer, um, uh, not a not a console gamer. Um, and, and I was going to say no disrespect to console gamers, but I, that would be that would be that would be disingenuous. Um, uh, and I've got you know I sort of over the years I, I, I some people build cars. I mean in London you don't really need to be to, to own a car is a bit strange, a bit un, 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 unnecessary and expensive. And hmm. so um, but I, I I built you know a PC, so I just sort of built it you know bit by bit. And I can remember in lockdown that was an amazing thing. And um, I got a 4090 eventually. I got a oh, 4090. Wow. Yeah. So with with that, I remember a friend of mine sort of almost slightly kind of um, threatening me, saying, you know, why don't you, you should stream? As in sort of, you've got that. Why don't you <laughs> share it around a bit? But, um, no, it's always, be, it's, it's always been something which I, I, I think I sort of um, found a little bit intimidating, the idea of it. And I thought, that sounds like a really, really strange, diff difficult um, world that, that I'm probably never going to get involved. If I'm brutally honest, I was like, I probably won't ever um, have a reason to be, be to be to be part of something like that. And I, <laughs> it's been completely thrilling. It's been completely amazing because you know I love gaming. The game is fantastic. It's not the kind of game I normally would play. That's got its own novelty throw in um uh, an incredible mod team led by this um incredible i mean they're they're more like my producer than anything else and um, blair i think that they're um uh, youtube uh, two all-nighters or something like that they've got a big um, you, uh, um them and, and their husband have got a big uh, youtube channel anyway um blair reached out to me over social media i mean all of this stuff has come completely <laughs> out of nowhere you know mm. wonderful passionate people have reached out out of nowhere and said um if you want any help or assistance or guidance i'd be happy to do it i mean it's incredible and so the stream got put together with 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 blair and, and their mods and then all sorts of other people came on board and helped with artwork and uh, and then the thrill it's 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 i, I think i've described it when it's like stepping out onto the surface of the moon having you know hundreds of people watching a game that i'm really bad at it's um yeah it's um streaming and sort of um you know video making it's kind of the new way of media it's kind of the new way of marketing and um, what I find really fascinating is a lot of people in the um, uh, that made Baldur's Gate three so special. Uh, the voices behind the characters are all really owning their role and kind of um, 
sticking with their character and not just moving on to the next project. They're streaming, they're making videos, they're really um, involved with the community. And yeah, streaming and YouTube is just a new way of uh, of doing that and sharing with a lot of people. Previously, it would be like, you know, still happens with conventions and uh, live appearances and signings mm -hmm. and such, but sharing it is a lot more common with streaming. And um, I imagine that's probably a whole new world if uh, you're stepping into it for the first time. Yeah, a hundred percent. And um, the streamily, the you know, in terms of kind of engaging in that way, in that way, and 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 having Q and As. Um, and there's varying degrees on there to which you to which you can engage. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm really glad that I that I would I probably wouldn't have done it if it hadn't have been for you know, a couple of people reaching out. I, I, and that's, that's something, that's something, mm. you know, to be, to be a lazy sat back at home actor waiting for the phone to ring. <laughs> no, I don't smoke, but you know, <laughs> sitting around with a fine glass of brown, you know, to have a community, which is so positive and yeah. Yeah. I try, I try, I trying to think of another situation because, to be honest with you, Sam, I find one of the things I love working about, uh, I love um, about working in, in video game on video game projects. Um, I mean, I, I've only I, I've only worked on um, a handful of big, you know, proper roles, but I did mocap, full mocap for F1 2019. I was playing a German Formula One driver, oh. and it was you know a great big. Found a huge studio in Pinewood, which is you know the biggest studio in in the UK, really. Mm. Um, and they converted a massive soundstage with hundreds of well, seemed like hundreds of cameras, and we had it was an incredible experience. And that was full full, full um, facial recognition, and everything. If that's what it's called, but the dots, and you know, it was everything. Mm. Um, whereas with 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 Baldur's Gate, it was everything up until the face. So it was uh, movement, but it wasn't our they weren't capturing facial um, expressions and that kind of thing. Uh, hmm. um, and a few others, I mean, I have done a worrying number of Germans. I've, I've played a worry. Sorry, that sounds awful. I speak German and it, has, it just so happens that a lot of the roles are, are Nazis because they are, they seem to be quite, quite the villain. Um, as in, they are often, <laughs> understandably, yeah. um, so, much, so, so much so that I once got um, the strange honor of moving through a French village as a US Marine or a US infantryman with a rifle. Um, and then I saw a couple of Ger Nazi German soldiers smoking outside a boulangerie, trained my sniper scope on one of them and they turned around, it was my face. Um, and I shot myself through between the eyes. At first I thought you were mentioning um... I, I saw in your demo reel, uh, I believe it was called Francois. Is that right? Uh, yeah. I thought you were mentioning yes, that. Yes. Um, and when you said you don't smoke, I, I, I tied together that uh, those cigarettes were probably fake then. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they were horrible. They were horrible. I was awful. They're herbal cigarettes, and they. The, the, <laughs> I think it took, it took such a long time to to re to repair my throat from that. Um, no, but it was quite the quite the joy to 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 train a, a sniper rifle on my my character's face, and to hear me being like, um, you know, sort of like Granata on the short so screaming German, and then just, you know, not it happen doesn't happen to ever doesn't happen to everyone that <coughs> sounds like a. Uh... Sounds like quite the experience that uh, probably don't get to, uh, probably not everybody gets to live out. <laughs> it was, uh, it was great because uh, when you were uh, when you were speaking there, the audio decided it uh, it wanted to cut out there because uh, you weren't joking about screaming German. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the the project was called Enemy Front. Was the mm. was the name of the game. Um, yeah, so diving into voices, um, 
there's a couple of characters that you play in Baldur's Gate 3. It's not just Roland. Um, you have Roland and you have uh, Booyag Piddle, uh, the Goblin, and uh, a couple of various voices as well. Um, I'd really like to dive into that a little bit, if you, uh, if you may. Um, what were the inspirations for Roland and the Goblin uh, Booyag Piddle? Because um, both of them are kind of on, on opposite ends uh, for what they are vocally. Um, but there, there's, so, there, there's so much distinct features about both of them. Um, what were the inspirations for both? I think that's a very good question. And I think that it's immediately made me think of something which I hadn't thought of before because it's, it's motion capture and you are in a suit um, you're in a strange room, you're covered in these, you know, bubbles or whatever. Um, you're already, you already look ridiculous. You already feel ridiculous. You know, the, the situation is ridiculous. Um, so, you know, in terms of embarrassing party games, we're already at sort of nine out of 10. <laughs> So you've you've made a fool of yourself. So why hold back at that point? So and and the fact that so much you know, um, in this case, there was a movement director, a, a vocal director. You know, there was all sorts of brilliant um, hands hands on deck, mm. people giving direction and and and, and steers. But I think it really helps. You mentioned that question having. Having all that physicality, mm. I think helps. I mean, certainly did with with me in terms of you know really embodying that 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 totally different creature. I remember with Booyag, you know, it was sort of and, and this was not just me. It was you know the direction. You know, let's let's bring him really down, George. You know, let's lower his 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 sort of point of gravity. You know, he's a he's a big guy. You know, it's no longer you know Roland might be quite sort of you know tall, thin. You know. Um, but it, I think the physicality really helped to, uh, and that's strange because often I'm the kind of, um, my approach, my craft, uh, might, might normally be from just the training and the directors that I've worked with and what I really enjoy and really find useful is often, you know, sort of your inside out. So working out, you know, I'd get the scripts and then just being clear on coming in with a few ideas never being too fixed because you you know you want to be uh, flexible of course and and and, and not too set in, in in your ways but um the other way or one of the other way outside in using physicality to kind of uh, discover um discover your character and, and and create and feel feel like you've really connected and you've found them um, so yeah, I think that really helped. And <laughs> I mean, I can't do that many accents, Sam. If I'm I've actually cut that bit, it's to all agents and producers and out there, I can do any any every accent uh, perfectly. Um, especially Canadian. No, Bring the phone. I, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. My number is done. No, I um, <laughs> I for some reason Cockney. I guess it's growing up, isn't it? Probably in what you watch. Because it was either American TV, probably some Canadians rather, and uh, and then you see, you know, you cut me, you are, how's it going? You are, all right, Trish? You know, so you know, in Brit, in you know, in the UK kind of uh, TV, I probably look back at it like that's ter terrible, terrible. But you've got you know certain kind of archetypes if you want to want to want to want to use that word. Mm. Um, and growing up, I think you know you sort of cut me. Um, which which the goblins, thank God, <laughs> for the for actors like me, were kind of given. Strange that, isn't it? They always see. I don't know, in, in Lord of the Rings. I'm trying to think. Are they also in the um, Jackson, the um, uh, the the film, the, the Lord of the Rings films? Are they Cockney as well? All the orcs. Are they all like that? Do they all speak like? They're all uh, very like raspy, throaty. Yeah. That's what I got from uh, from Booyog as well. There's a lot of uh, a lot of like throaty like rasp. Um, yeah, I actually listened to the Booyog Piddle voice line for probably an hour straight last night, and also a little bit today, just to try to like learn and lean into the voice a little bit more to see like what was happening before the interview. And I I just 
I love learning about this stuff. Um, it yeah, it it really starts off, um, like it comes from he comes from a place of curiosity, like he's reading a book, and then he kind of mm -hmm. leans more into like the goblin side after, um, which I find really really cool. Um, and yeah, if I remember correctly, his 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 sort of bio was that he's he's he he's smart. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and he considers himself smart, which which I think is quite fun in terms of um, I, I, those comedic characters who are unaware. I think is is you know he, he his his version of who he is and how how intelligent he is versus the truth, <laughs> the disparity. <laughs> yeah, he. That's the thing that kind of sets apart Booyah from the rest of the goblins is he has. Um, yeah, he has like a, a smart. He's smart for a goblin, and um, would you say that? I, I guess this is kind of just a question that popped into my head uh, right away. Um, do you think maybe um, Roland could have assisted Booyog in in terms of playing a smarter version of a goblin? Do you think they kind of played hand in hand? Uh, Sam, I have to tell you, I haven't yet reached Booyog, so I don't know if there's any uh, if there's any interactions between the two in the game. I'm assuming there's not, but mm. um, doing a deep dive into them as characters, I, I think that Roland has a pretty thin view of um, beings that he sees as, as as in any way inferior, and I don't think goblins um, make it very high up the list. So mm. I doubt I doubt there'd be much kind of. I mean. I hope this isn't jumping ahead, but I think one of the, you know, one of the lovely things is easy to be glib, and I and I love love being glib, but um, it was amazing to discover. Um, I think probably about a year in to working on it, um, and obviously not working on it every week, working on it at different amounts at different times. Um, but the the one I think they said the lead writer, but one of the lead writers was 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 had decided to come on board with Roland and was taking on mm. uh, writing for him. And yeah, it's it's. I mean, I think they said this about TV, didn't they? Around the time of um, uh, Breaking Bad and things like that, that, that it's it's quite unusual or rare. Until the streamer, streaming services to, to to have a character which you get to sort of play over a long period of time, which has has lots and lots of, um, you know, has has big uh, developments and that kind of thing. And I think towards the end, after the whole debacle at um, later in the game, I think there's a there's a real there's a real sense that maybe I guess what I'm trying to say is is that Father Part One, I don't I think Roland would dispense with the goblins very quickly the cats are attacking each other uh <laughs> godfather part two probably the same um but godfather part three maybe you know a, a, a softer more uh, a kinder role a more more empathetic role and maybe he might have more time more time for the goblin hmm. <laughs> that's um... a very earnest answer to that question <laughs> <laughs> um with uh, voices in mind, um, Roland and Booyag, there was also um, various voices that you did as well. Um, I saw in the notes that um, there was the uh, dead drow and there was also a uh, dead fisherman. Um, I'm kind of curious about that because um, death noises to make sort of like a convincing sound like obviously, uh, you're not going to be taking an arrow or a sword to the gut throughout uh, motion capture or uh, in the in the booth. <laughs> um, how do you, um, how do you convince us, the players, to keep us immersed with, you know, sounds like that? I'm I'm curious about that. Yeah. Uh, with the death with the death sounds, I think there was some great sort of direction in terms of. How you were being brought back to life, and 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 where you were coming from. And there was some quite clear. The direction was really helpful. I remember that. Mm. Um, 
um, I think you you know you get you get a few passes as well. So you you know there's there's um, there's an opportunity to try different things out. So there's always I think a variety. Um, but yeah, I mean it just goes back to, to to me playing the game and discovering the other characters. It's 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 very immersive, isn't it? And that I think to be honest, that's what I'm really enjoying about it is is that I um, that is what I get I get really really into with games and what i love about pc games is the modding <laughs> because you can just tweak it can't you to um using reshade or you know uh, tweaks to the to the gaming systems or whatever um just to make it exactly what you want um and and to make it as immersive as you want and that's what i really like and just yeah i and again i might be jumping the question i maybe or maybe not but i i do think about ai and that kind of thing and whether Mm. You would have that same level of connection if it was a an AI generated voice. Mm. Um, I suppose it would be written by, maybe potentially written by a by by a human. But I do wonder with that because there's a, something amazing about this game in terms of how lucky all of the VAs were to be to be involved with it. But there is something amazing. Um, about its use of of brilliant script and, and, and some great casting and some great VAs, which I don't know if I've experienced before. I I mean I I be, I'm replaying The Last of Us and there's some great there's some great you know the, the remastered version. But but normally a cutscene comes up I'm like you know I, I'm not sure I'm I'm not sure I'm really really getting enough out of that i know a lot of people do but but uh, with the with Baldur's gate it's really it stands out a bit uh, for me anyway hmm. um you mentioned ai and i'm actually seeing a couple of comments saying that uh ai is uh is trash and garbage and all that sort of thing and i i'm behind that for sure and it reminded me of a um uh, a comment that uh, another voice actor said that I super agree with. They said um, AI is able to do replications and they're able to do just that, replications, but they can't put the human emotion behind um, the characters or voices. Um, and AI was never going to be able to get to that point. Being able to do like actual emotions um yeah. and like the human experience and um that's the biggest difference between the two and yeah i i i'm yeah. super behind that comment that uh, that she said um and Baldur's Gate captures that perfectly though, is is the human emotion yeah i was just thinking though like of, of i remember i <laughs> one of the first times i ever cried in the movie theater was watching and this is going to reveal how old i am um honey i shrunk the kids <laughs> and um <laughs> but I, I i remember crying and crying um because a, a a cgi ant a not very good cgi ant was killed you know and uh, by a scorpion i uh, hope spoiler um <laughs> apologies for that but it's but i was so i was completely devastated by by a cgi ant so who knows um, but no, I, 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 I think I agree with, with what you're, um, what the, 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 the quote you were mentioning then before. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's just it. Is that Baldur's Gate is able to capture that, um, perfectly is that, is that human emotion and human connection. And, um, that's what makes me really curious too. um, getting different perspectives on how these voices came together and, um, even the uh, even the dead drow uh, raider and dead fisherman, um, voices like that I would say are like the backbone. You need stuff like that to continue the immersion. If if you don't have that, and um, you know, it sounds something completely off. Um, us as a player would say, "Oh, that's kind of weird. That doesn't sound right." Yeah. Um, and it kind of pulls you out of that a little bit more, and. Um, yeah, having those together just kind of smoothens everything out between cutscene gameplay, next cutscene. Definitely needed. 
yeah i can see what you mean i i think and you reminded me of uh sometimes when you're working on a on a theater show you, you if there's a moment where you kind of lose the audience hmm. you know you break the immersion you break the, 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 the fourth wall um and suddenly you've got to get them back and that can be a real uphill struggle you know and it's so it's it's keeping the ball up and i think you're absolutely right the the immersion is maintained isn't it and you're and you're absolutely right. i mean it, uh, as someone who's who's played quite a few supporting roles myself and um it's it, they're really hard they're really hard i mean especially um i mean going into a mocap studio uh you know, but but just to slightly segue you know go side work if you're working on a tv or um, film job and you turn up and you know everyone all the main characters are they know exactly what they're doing. They've been working on it for weeks. So you're expected to, to turn up, get with the program, deliver the goods, you know. Um, and, and, and those characters are essential because, as you say, if, if, if they um, break the spell, then it's, you know, it's, 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 so it's, I think it's even harder. I think if you're in a show and you've been there for weeks, it's, it's win, 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 because you just get... <laughs> You've, 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 you, you're, you're running hot, you know, your engine, you know, you've got it, it's all so much, which, which to go back to your question before about these characters, Roland, um, when we would come back and do a session, maybe after a few weeks or even months, um, often it would be normal to sort of show kind of previous work so that we'd get an idea of, of where we'd been and what was going on. Um, and, uh, but, but interestingly with Roland, I, I didn't often need that that much. It was quite easy to jump, um, j jump straight in. I, I, I could remember him, you know, kind of muscle memory, whereas some of the other characters, probably Booyog or whatever you, yes, it needs a bit of a warm up. You know, you're like, okay, right. Where, where, who is this guy? You, know, you get, need to get back in, back into, into the character. Speaking of, uh, Booyog, was Booyog mo as well? Yeah. So, um, you're kind of a a, a taller uh, taller person. You're a little over six feet. Did you have to um, did did you have to do anything special for playing a uh, I don't know maybe two three foot tall goblin? And no, I think that as I mentioned uh, before, it, it was the width. Oh, it was the width you know, that was more important than, rather than the height. You know, I think it's a sort of where your um where your center of gravity is, you know, mm. you know, where, when you're, when you're walking, where are you leading from? Are you leading from your belly, your, your chest, your chin, you know, some, yeah. The Booyog is, yeah, yeah. <laughs> a little bit lower than Roland. Yeah. Roland is, um, Roland, like you mentioned, it is, uh, is sort of taller, um, higher yeah. above. Yeah. I think that the, the but sometimes I would have to be told, you know, kind of just loosen them up a little bit because you can you can become quite, you know, especially the sort of English, you can be quite stiff. And he's not, he's not that, he's not that that stiff. There's a there's a flow to it almost, you know. Um, um, one word to the next is very um, not wavy, but it's um, it it has a flow to it. Um, and yeah. that's something that you can kind of pick up for sure. Um, listen to. You know, a line or two, and you could probably um, get um, immersed in that right away. I, I I use immerse a lot, it seems, but uh, that's something that you could pick up right away as a, as as a player, um, or even just listening to the voice lines. You're able to uh, sense that right away. Yeah, there's so just things on there. That's that's why I, I totally agree. I mean, as I think I've heard in a couple of the other um, voice actors, and they've been talking about it. You don't, you know, you might come out of the, you're on your own, you might come out of the booth and bump into um, Jason Isaacs. I certainly didn't, sadly. Um, but, you know, you don't, and get changed, behind, but you don't, you, you aren't working, um, rehearsing together or anything like that. So, so um, and in some ways, I wonder whether that's in some ways interesting because, you know, you really want to take ownership of your role um, and, and, and have that distinct. And um, and I love that about it, that the, 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 the variety is so 
so it's so great isn't it and and varied i, I you know I, I i love it um and everyone's really doing their own thing it's mm. very refreshing um i know that you've had the introduction by watching your stream i don't want to spoil anything for you i want to avoid that as much as possible i know you've had the introduction to these characters already and i know that there's a lot of voice lines surrounding them um cal and leah you know their you know their uh roland's relationship to them i i presume i don't want to uh spoil anything yes. for you yeah i had a conversation with someone on uh twitter the other day and they said that roland really stepped into um the older sibling uh sibling role with uh, uh the three of them together and they said that it really uh reminded them of uh you know themselves with their own uh uh siblings that they have do you have siblings as well did that help adopt Roland a little bit yeah that's a very, it's a great question so um, um absolutely and i have a brother and a sister and 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 there were moments there where you know maybe it wasn't quite working or whatever and visualizing and connecting and really because you know i think you know we have to use ourselves as actors. i love the idea of being a method transformative actor but ultimately i think that you accentuate parts of probably who you already are you know you or maybe or maybe draw draw back um, those 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 qualities but i think that um it was it was really great when i felt like i could really connect with Alalia. Mm. Um, as real, you know, as my real siblings, and mm. and was hilarious. I mean, quietly funny, because I mean, I don't. Think, my brother and sister haven't played it, um, and my sister's got some some kids, but they're too young to. So, but I, I would sometimes go, God, they saw this. <laughs> you know, me, <laughs> me, me, telling telling them off or or mocking because I'm I'm the youngest, whereas Roland is, you know, mm. not certainly not. That's fine. So I sort of thought, I was <laughs> like, I wonder what my, I wonder what Edward, Edward would think. <laughs> yep, that's definitely George. Is uh, could you imagine if they would say something? Yeah, that's definitely George. <laughs> Just by listening to a couple of Roland yeah. lines. <laughs> I, think, I think they'd be, they'd be, they'd be very, uh, they'd be annoyed and surprised. <laughs> Told off. That's um, yeah, I see uh, someone saying youngest sibling revenge. That's uh something that uh... <laughs> yeah i think that i think that's true i think there might have been a part of me which was like yeah th today this feels good i'm really glad i came into the studio i'm really glad we're doing this today <laughs> what if i was the oldest what would that look like <laughs> yeah exactly i love it when acting moves into into in a therapy that you get that you get paid for mm. um oh that's awesome that uh that definitely checks out. Um, I don't. I'm an only child, but I was still able to feel that connection. So, um, knowing that now, it feels even more special. So I'm, I'm definitely gonna have to go back and uh, pay attention to, uh, to the voice lines of the three together. Um, well, it's it's so nice um, having the community talking on <clears throat> Twitter. Do you call it Twitter or X now? I don't really know. I've always just stuck with Twitter. I know it's like Twitter. all ch try to change over to X and everything like that. I I can't get behind the whole switch to to X. <laughs> it's it's always Twitter to me. <laughs> but you know all the social social media. But then you know interviews <clears throat> with, with with you know really interesting interviews. It's really lovely because it sort of it makes the most. It brings it, it gives you know people who are involved with an opportunity to kind of re engage with it and to relive it and reconnect with it it's really nice it's um yeah it's a way of connecting um being able to share mm. stories and um being able to uh relate like that i got to learn a lot about the the sibling portion i'm an only child i've never had to um mm. i've never been in the youngest situation the oldest situation sharing never had to do that it's just i'm just me and um yeah you really got to learn a lot because there's there, there's definitely a sibling rivalry but it's always in the thick of things there's always a, a togetherness which is uh super mm -hmm. important yeah yeah right hmm. um to kind of segue from uh all these questions 
This is a, definitely a question that I'm both curious myself, and also a lot of people have been curious as well. Um, role in romance scenes. Is there an interest? Is there a, um, a, <laughs> a care? Um, what are your thoughts on that? Well, I mean, d d d d again, dangerous waters, because I, um, uh, I guess maybe this is a youngest, ch youngest sibling thing. Um, mm. uh, sort of jumped straight into this. I saw that some people were talking about it. And I was like, oh, wow. Yeah, great. Yeah, la, 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 la. But then I also see that some people are, you know, there's, there, there are, there are different sides to this, you know, it's mm. sort of, um, can you romance it? I mean, to be honest with you, Sam, I'm, I'm, I, I'm not qualified to answer that question because I haven't got to the, the point in the game where I've romanced characters, so I don't really know mm. what that's like. Fair, um, fair. I, so yeah, I mean, I, when I when I first saw that, that there was some some people being very sweet about that, I mean, it's you know, any interest in a character you played is is pretty uh, amazing. That immediately I was like, yes, 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 yes. It sounds great. Sounds great. But I think, um, you know, time is a time. Time is a, a, a teacher, and um, mm. I don't know. I think, I think it was quite clear early on that that the way the game was shaping up was not necessarily going to be one which was going to sprawl endlessly. Um, you know, with lots of kind of um, additions. That was the general sense that I got. So um, there wasn't really a, a sort of anticipation for that, um, um, and it's all very well. I'm very, I'm very good at sort of saying yes before before thinking about something. Mm. You know, going, you know, I think it might be, yeah, it would be, would come with its own challenges. I'm sure. You're saying yes now, and then uh, if it comes to light, then you have to mocap it, and uh, <laughs> there might be yes. some uh, some some regrets. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, well, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll soon I'll be romancing people in, uh, in my playthrough. Not a not a starian because I, um, I shoved a stake into his gut. Um, but um, other people, other people, um, yes. What was I going to say? Yes, no, yeah. Um, it's very, very, very interesting. Um, the romance side, the romance side of things it seems to be something people talk about. Oh, yeah, that's what I was going to say. Um, you know, Twitter is a wonderful place. However, occasionally I'll do one too many clicks. Uh, with the fan art um, or the fanfic, I, 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 I mean, see exciting, exciting, exciting stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but I, but I think people are very. I think that the community is amazing because they 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 shield the VAs very well from it. I think there's a great sort of there's a sort of there's a phalanx, a sort of Praetorian guard of kind of like don't let the you know. Um, and I, I mean, I think it's some of it is very well drawn. Um, yeah. But it's it, it's it doesn't it doesn't hold back. There's a lot of um, I've I've seen a lot of uh artwork over on Twitter for many of the characters, and a few of them I've said directly, you know, um, some of this belongs in like the art book. Like if you were to pre-order a game and you get like physical yeah. art book, it's like this is something that I could see in one of those um before the making of the characters art books. There are some very talented uh, artists out there, and yeah. a, a lot of them are here right now. It's it's incredible. Um, yes, um, I mean the 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 fan. I ran a sort of fan art um, sort of uh, competition. I was just so, so amazed by it all, and it would be fun just to have something to to engage with everyone with, and um, it's uh, unbelievable. What, what 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 people made you know so many people um, I love it I, I think it's incredible mm. um, and I noticed that I think that Larian and the, they also occasionally might sort of in, I like I like stuff I, I, I might be wrong with that but it's so it's I love the way that the community is so kind of yeah it's a very good it's a very it seems like a very healthy kind of positive community which really sort of um has good vibes with each other but yeah the the, the, the talent and the attention to detail is quite mind-blowing i mean when i start you start to look at it and then you start to think god you know this is how did how did they make this mm, the detail the shading and yeah yeah hmm. <laughs> um yeah it's just that is um 
detail and shading for uh, for that really goes to show how people draw inspiration from the game. And I would warrant a bet that it almost continues the game, so to speak, uh, for these artists. It almost um, provides additional content that we may not have seen directly from the game. And it kind of continues it and draws it out of that game, um, out of the game experience um, for yeah. both the artists and also um, ones that um, um, indulge in the artwork as well. Yeah, I mean, actually going back to um, saying that you know, love stuff recently, uh, I became completely. I I think it's an interesting point. I hope it's not a boring segue, but. I was playing Alan Wake 2, and I, I mean, I'm allowed, it's okay to talk about other games, isn't it, on this? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm Alan Wake 2 and uh, The Last of Us, and it's really amazing to um, see some of the artwork which was made to inspire some of the set scenes and, and environments of The Last of Us. And likewise with Alan Wake 2, some of the music, I was like, oh my God, this is incredible. Mm. And it's it's awesome to love a game for, for, for what it is when you're playing it, but then to, you know, say kind of a loading screen or, or um, you know, you're in the, case, in the case of The Last of Us, waiting for the shaders to load. Um, it's amazing to just go through the options and see the sort of um, um, all the other little behind the scenes and the extras. And, and I wonder whether, I, again, I'm still just sort of in the foothills with Baldur's Gate, but yeah, I, I, I can see a world where the fan the fan art and, and stuff is so, so awesome mm. that the people would be mad to not sort of include those in some ways or, you know, kind of feature them. Um Yeah, you were you were mentioning the music and uh that spoke out to me right away. I um, just a little bit about me. Uh, music is something that's huge for me. I've been doing um, anything music uh, all my life. And um, the Raphael theme was the one that spoke out a lot to me. I uh, listened to that for seven hours straight uh, the first time I heard it. So, I heard, so I heard that on your interview with him. <laughs> mm -hmm. Incredible. By the way, I you just saying that you watched that, that, that uh, it's very heartwarming. Um, well, I mean, listen. I hate to hate to. Hate to, 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 to no, I I, I I I I I did. I also have to say, it's an, it's, and I'm so glad that things panned out the way they did. I um, while I was uh, working on Roland, as happens sometimes, um, I was asked to audition for other roles. Oh, um, one of which was they said, um. I think this is all fine, but it was sort of like drawing on inspiration. It was sort of like um, Alan Rickman in Die Hard. Now, Sam, if there is one reason why I am applying my art, applying my you know wares as an actor, voice actor, whatever, it's because of one man. Sadly, I never got to meet him. I did once see him from afar. Um, I was an extra in Sweeney Todd, and I saw him on the set but i never met him alan rickman i named one of my cats after him rickman doesn't recognize the name um <laughs> alan rickman um robin hood prince of thieves i queued up for a vhs lots of people on this will not know what that is um at blockbuster video i saw it three four times in the cinema which was a lot because I was, I was pretty tiny. But me and my sister used to do, uh, we would try and recreate scenes from it um, to get. Anyway, the inspiration for this role was think Alan Rickman, Die Hard. I thought to myself, I thought this is a dream come true. <laughs> um, I didn't get the role. I'm so glad I didn't get the role. I'm so glad I didn't get the role. Um, <laughs> and it was it was for it was for Raphael. And I've yet to come across him in the game, but I I will be looking out for um, all things. Um, but but um, it's uh, yes, it's it, 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 joking aside. The Alan Rickman was my uh, 
you were asking earlier about kind of you know getting into this part of getting into this this world and what i've been up to and um yeah joking aside that was just for me just blew my mind and i think that i love some of the characters in in Baldur's gate because there's there's a similar level of kind of grandiosity the the the, the scale the kind of the the egos and the stakes i love it it's really really um the imagination is 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 so fired i think you just made myself included uh everybody excited for when you finally get to meet Raphael. so um i'm gonna have to yes. pay close close attention to your streams yes. now um to be able to well, uh, i mean see that first and also, reaction just, andrew just seems like the most the loveliest guy i mean it's, 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 it, and it's, and actually all the people that I'm you know gradually getting to know a little bit on or it's just it's 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 extra nice when they're not only insanely talented and brilliant and but are incredibly wonderful lovely generous people as well you're like oh, well, the world the world can be a nice place hmm. Andrew is one of the nicest people I've probably ever interacted with uh, yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Part part of me was like, maybe I'll turn Sam's uh, interview request down on that basis. As sort of, you know, you don't want to come after that 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 act. Mm. Well, I um, I'm very very uh, happy to say that um, every single experience is unique. So um, yes, that's being good. being able to learn more. <laughs> Um, yeah. and getting more um, um, but I guess behind the scenes not really behind the scenes but behind the scenes kind of learning more about it um, yeah every interaction is always going to be unique so um, that yeah. is definitely a um, um, huge privilege to myself um, I see a lot of people are uh, excited about a collab now I would love to see Roland and Raphael together in the same room. Okay. They would take over the, the whole world. <laughs> led unstoppable. By, led, by <laughs> led by him. Absolutely unstoppable. Um I hope uh that this moment right now is is, is the bridge to be able to uh, get that happening. I would love that. I'd, I'd, I'd pay I'd pay good money. You'd pay good money to be in it. I'd I pay would, good money. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew would be very rich. Um, yes, very good. <laughs> um, so I believe that's most of my questions. Um, I'd like to. Uh, you, we last talked about uh, about Twitter uh, or X, as some people would probably call it. I'd like to turn to Twitter because um, one thing that I really like to do is. Um, Turning uh, to uh, the fans um, and what they would like to uh, ask. I'm only one person. Um, there's, there's a lot more of them. Um, so that I, I believe they're able to get uh, a lot of interesting questions uh, done as well. Would you, uh, would you mind to dive into some of these? I'd be, I'd be honored. So the first one that I have here is uh, from someone named Turnip Gatherer. They said... Um, did you get to see the Roland model at any point uh, while motion, uh, while doing mocap? Uh, what did you think of it? Did that change your angle and perspective? Well, um, depends how long you've got, because the um, answer to that question is no. Mm. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't. No, I didn't. Um, uh, I'm trying to think. Was that early access and? No, no, no. Oh, oh, maybe I'm um, in early access. I managed because the, 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 I think the costume slightly, the, the sort of uh, outfit changed a little bit. Um, got an even more impressive kind of silver neck thing. Um, I think I noticed from early access. Uh, n n n no, I don't. I don't think. Um, I mean, there was some. I I, I didn't know about the the whole kind of world that much in terms of what a tiefling was i mean speaking german i still didn't you know tief was meaning deep i didn't really sort of um latch onto that either but um devil you know any kind of sort of horn um sort of slightly evil or whatever um 
demonic. No, uh, to be to answer your question, I I, I didn't, um, and it's a it's an interesting question because I suppose a lot of the time, you know, as if you're playing a character, you you know what you're doing, you know what you're doing, and then suddenly you get given your costume, and it sounds so it sounds almost childish, but that can give you so much, you know, mm. that can that can suddenly just unlock all sorts of things. So it's a it's a great question, but um, no. Um, I suppose because so much of that is added on. Um, it's a great question. I hadn't, I hadn't thought of it in terms of, um, you know, in playing these parts. Mm. You know, you normally get uh, an idea of these things, you know, ahead of time. Uh, with with theatre, certainly, but TV and film, less so. Anyway, I, I'm waffling, but no, no, I, uh, we, I didn't see what I looked like. I didn't know, um, have the faintest idea. Uh, what, what what I was going to actually look like. That immediately tells me that there's a lot more, um, that there's more of an impressive feat on your part to being able to get the character kind of delivered to you, and then you kind of just delivering right back just by you know a description or a voice line. So being able to create something out of quote unquote, uh, so to speak, thin air. Um, is just way more impressive to me um, right away. That's the kind of you say, Sam. I feel like you've just rolled a sort of what's it called a, um, a critical success on sort of charm. <laughs> um, sometimes, some sometimes we roll <laughs> nat twenties on charisma. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm agreeing. Mm. <laughs> then it worked. <laughs> I, I I'm agreeing. <laughs> <laughs> um, I lo but I do I love it. I love the sort of the mind. I, I'm with the character that I'm I'm create, I'm playing as in my in my stream. Her name is Rolanda. Rolanda, yep. Uh, she, she 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 is half tiefling, but she's a bard, um, and she she really works in the shadows. She works in deception. She works in charm. She works in. Um, um persuasion that's mm. where that's where where she's where she's heading for so so i maybe i maybe i'm getting into her her, her world a bit too much but i definitely felt a sort of critical success role from you then <laughs> um yeah well done ah then the uh then the compliment worked perfect <laughs> <laughs> um but no that's honestly um there's a lot of people who I guess would be deemed visual being able to like see something and then going, Hey, that's what I think it's going to be. But I guess some folks are just not visual. They're just be able to hear something, receive something and be able to build the foundations from there. And, um, I, I find that very impressive to be able to be able to build the foundations just off of, um, you know, a biography or a voice line or um, slight direction here or there. And just being able to take ownership of the role from there, it's very, very impressive. Uh, I mean, I go back to Alan Rickman. <laughs> I, I suppose it's just there's a sort of, you pick up from other performances, don't you, over the years, and you, you build up a sort of, um, an idea of of these people and you I mean you know you observe we all observe don't we it's what makes certain you know of observations and insights we all have them but it, you collect those and then you you get an opportunity with the right character and the right writing and the right mm -hmm. yeah I think I think um this, this is a sort of fortunate moment fortunate casting it's kind of like what I mentioned with Andrew as well. Uh, it seemed he seemed to really resonate with it. Um, transferable skills, being able to take one thing and then place it uh, slightly into another with different variations um, to to fit the role a little bit more. Would was that something that lands with you as well? Yeah, just just um, remind me of what did what did he mean exactly with transferable skills um, as in outside of acting or. Yeah, he was mentioning a lot of uh, theater, live performances, um, mm -hmm. and then being able to take that into the physicality of you know, 
motion capturing a character and um yeah 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 i i completely agree i realized that the most if i'm i'm pretty honest the first time i learned it was uh the aforementioned role i played in f1 2019 because this this stage was huge and it was meant to be a um uh you know the back back area of uh an f1 uh you know track or whatever and it's the the mechanics it's it's where the and we had just the markings on the floor, mm. just just the bits of cell, just bits of uh, tape, coloured tape. Oh, there's a there's a McLaren, you know, there's a, there's a, there's a car, there's a mistake. And then this is the the, the works, just in this gigantic empty room, huge empty room, huge, and definitely um, the stuff that you maybe learn more when it comes to theatre in terms of doing all that work to really imagine where you are and, and and commit and really commit to that and really believe in it, I think is is definitely more theatre than, you know, if you're on a set, often the chair is a chair, you know, and the, the office is an office, whatever. But, you know, if you haven't got the props and you haven't got, I mean, we you literally had nothing. You know, you, you had no costume, no... Um, and in that situation, um, I think Andrew is absolutely, I completely agree that the, the, the techniques and maybe the disciplines that, that, that lend themselves more to theatre in terms of just the, you know, the imagination, um, which, which takes me back to why I love gaming so much, because I truly believe that us as gamers, I'm not saying we're a superior member of the species, but um, I think to to really get the most out of games, I think, and this is not me, a, fr a friend of mine, a brilliant comedian, a brilliant friend of mine said this to me and I sort of look up to him. So I sort of take anything he says as good gospel, but, but he sort of said, you know, the reason, that, you know, the, I think the, 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 the ga gamers who really love gaming and especially, you know, through, you know, maybe later on in life and stuff like that, um, you know, to stay passionate um, is this, you your level of imagination in the same way that when you're reading a book or whatever you really kind of really immerse i guess that's what the sort of theme of that keeps yeah. coming up isn't it in, in this conversation it's just that um the immersion and if you if you allow you you know you have your 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 imagination is really and that's what i love so much about it as an art form mm. i really love that and i try to make a sort of ham handed um, way of sort of exploring that, talking about a, a bit about that in a, in another podcast about how going back to my kind of weird hangups about being a gamer, you know, coming out as a gamer, um, that it's come on so far in terms of the art form that it's so what it was maybe when I was a kid. You play video games, you know, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, where it, where it is now. Um, it takes decades for for these things, you know. I think that you know, films were 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 looked at with scorn. You know, um, uh, I think even novels weren't taken seriously because they weren't poetry. You know, mm. it takes a while for for these art forms. You know, The Godfather is revered, but that's decades after the first kind of flickies or talkies or whatever they're called. You know. Um, Buster Keaton was seen as a clown, whereas you know, now he's revered as this great. So I just, I guess it's sort of, um, I love that side of, 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 of the art form that it really takes you into, it, it, it takes you into a world and a, and, a, and, a, and, a, and a place in a way that watching a film doesn't. I think it's closer to, for me, I feel like it's closer to, um, you know, reading a novel or whatever, there's a certain amount of imagination that you need to populate what you're doing and all the rest of it. Yeah. I think if there's anything to take from this interview, uh, question and answer, I think it's that right there. Um, if there's anything to take away from it and uh, and bring something home, you know, it's it's that right there. That's yeah, that's spot on. Um, imagination yeah. being able to create something. Um, metaphorically out of nothing like you mentioned tape on the floor um being able to 
take uh, tape on the floor with the word car on it and being able to um, actually seeing a car and then having your performance reflect that, being able yeah. to make something out of nothing is that's an, an, an art form that uh, not everybody could uh, could get into or uh, successfully perform and do. Yeah, I mean, but you know, even just going through the uh, early few hours of Baldur's Gate, you know, the environment is so rich, and the law. I mean, I am a little bit kind of, you know, I was a little bit, if I'm completely honest, a bit like, I'm not sure I'm really into fact. You know, I like things to be realistic. Oh, it's well, you know, I, I like historical accuracy, blah blah blah. Mm. But but you know, it, it when it won me over so quickly, um, and then you once you're in, you're in. And it's 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 that leap of kind of um you know leap of uh, immersion and sort of leap of I love I I I enjoy it. I especially enjoyed it when I saw one 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 of the um people who was 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 chatting when I was when I was streaming was saying, Oh I love I love lighting the candles. The graphics look so nice. You know, when you're in the uh, catacombs. Mm. So now I make sure I go to each little and it's so nice. <laughs> <laughs> um water physics um shadows yeah. just a lot of everything is able to come together and it it really is the little things that are actually are the big things um and yeah that's that's what i uh sense when you say uh lighting the candles it's yeah it's a lot of the little things actually make up most of the big things it brings uh um like lighting a candle in a really dark uh um cave or a room and you can you, you can see after you turn on the uh the candle after you uh, light it that yeah this is a very dark room and you know it kind of brings more to that yeah yeah absolutely um, and us and us as higher form species gamers you know we have that 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 higher level of uh imaginative uh you know we apply uh, the best attention to detail and <laughs> yeah um yeah no i i really like that question so uh turn up gather i don't know if you're here but thank you for that one and uh i think uh i i hope that answers it because i couldn't think of a better answer than that um, great name turn up gather <laughs> um you were mentioning uh, streaming, um, so this one actually goes right back into that. Uh, from someone named Gimbalbach, do you have any favorite moments from your streams or fan interactions? The adjective that has been used to describe my journey as Rolanda so far has been chaos or chaotic. Um, have there been, what was the adjective Gimbalbach used? Enjoyed? Um, any favorite moments from your streams or fan favorite. interactions? Um, um, besides Astarian? Um, <laughs> uh, I mean, I have to, it, 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 sometimes before I start, I have to take a deep breath and I am thinking, can I do this? Can mm. I do this? Am I ready to? It's, it's, I find it really exhilarating, is the positive word. Um, um, uh, I love. I love the fact. I mean, it's an interesting balance with the streaming, isn't it? Because um, it wants to be fresh. It wants to be, you know. I feel like, hope, you know, what's going to be more more interesting or fun for us all, you know, as, a, as it being a live experience. Mm -hmm. That relationship between the person who's playing it versus the person is is that you know you don't want to be too um, you want to be kind of in the moment and, and you know. It, experiencing it um there have been some total shocks i mean it's like a great kind of novel isn't it there's like um i went into a a crypt a damp a dank dank what was it called dank cavern or something like that oh the dank uh on. the dank crypt i believe i know what you're crypt. talking about yeah and ended up stepping on the trap and, and incinerating my whole um i ended up uh taking off rolanda in in the inventory i went to a trader and i started taking off her clothes without realizing 
and selling her clothes without realizing um that was shocking um i've um offended people i've offended L- L- lazel who i can never get her the name right hmm. um we've really come on leaps and bounds in in terms of our relationship i feel like rolanda might have a romantic liaison with with gail hmm. um but who knows nothing's off the table i mean it might be lazel who knows and but hmm. You know, it's te- I got to say, Sam, it's tearing it. It's tearing it for all sorts of fibers. You know, all sorts of heartstrings. And I mean, I had to the, the 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 stream I did before the last one. I was. I mean, people were really sweet. They were genuinely like, "You look exhausted." I was. I was completely because I killed a starian, and um, it's it's very it's very um, it's a real roller coaster. Mm. It's real, it's, um, so there's lots of. I mean, favorite. I don't know if I'd call it favorite, but definitely memorable moment. <laughs> <laughs> um, for those that don't know, if you take a look at the pinned comment in chat, you can actually see where you can catch uh, George's live streams Mondays and Wednesdays. And there's also a YouTube where uh, the VODs are getting posted as well. Check out those links and uh, you can catch up the, uh, the story there. Um... From someone named Von Jeekin, was there an auditioning process? And if so, what was it like for a role like Roland? Well, I've already touched on some of the auditioning. A yes, bit, very yes. much so. And um and uh and um I believe on for, for me anyway, uh sometimes with voice auditions you might just send in a um a voice demo, uh just maybe just an audio audio. But for this, because of the mocap side of it, it was a, it was a, a self self tape. Mm. Um, so, um, which which you know, I think is quite common these days. Um, and and that was it really. I mean, there was there was there was a fair amount of kind of history and uh, um, bio bi- biographies and stuff, but not 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 a huge amount, not a huge amount. So, um, again, you know. Fortunate, fortunate, fortunate casting. Um, and I can't remember the exact timeline, but it, I don't remember it going on for for ages and ages. Oh, did it? I think maybe it did take a while to hear back. You know, now that I think about it, mm. I think with a project as big as this, sometimes if you're working in it, I've seen it the same with um, um, you know, bigger films. Or something. you can audition, and then you might not hear for months. Mm. Um, so, so. Yes, so there was an audition for it. I, 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 I was about to say I would have loved it if they just rung up and been like, "Are you free?" But I just said that. But that, that, I've come to learn that that's that that thought that that has its own awfulnesses because imagine being offered something and you don't don't even know you can do it. Imagine that first day at the office. Great, come on in. Yeah, that would be a, a shock for sure. Um... To kind of jump on that a little bit, is there, um, whenever a reel is submitted, um, I imagine there's some uh, form of like nervousness, anxiety to like submit the reel and, you know, maybe not hear back for several months. Is that something that uh, sets in? Yeah, I think that, you know, more generally with, um, I mean, someone experienced like Andrew would probably be able to answer this with even, you know, with a greater level of insight and, um, but I, it, it, it's, it's, it, I, I think the challenge of, um, following a career in, um, acting or voice acting and that is, 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 is the way you can manage, um, that side of things. I think it's probably a huge part of it. You've really got to find, um, uh, a healthy relationship. Mm. With the the um, the inbuilt high level of rejection, the inbuilt high level of powerlessness, the inbuilt mm. um, you know you 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 are waiting for someone to give you a job, and it's difficult. You can't go and you know practice your golf. You know you can't go and um, it's difficult to act on your own. I think that. It's impossible to know. I think it's great to go to classes. I think it's great to. I mean, I think it's more of a thing. I don't know so much about um, the Canadian scene, but 
in America, it's more common, I think, to have an act, you know, to sort of day training all the time, whereas in the UK, there was, it might not be so much more anymore, but there was a sort of uh, a time when you went to drama school, like I did for three years, and then that's it. Mm. End of. Whereas actually, the truth is, is that, you know, you probably need to sort of keep your hand in. Um, and you can do that by, you know, staying uh, really involved with seeing stuff and, uh, you know, keeping yourself really, really sort of um, inspired and kind of, um, but yes, I think that uh, that is to answer that sort of question in a roundabout way. I think that I would put a very high level of importance on one's mental well, the mental resilience mm. needed um, at any stage, no matter how big or small you are. Um, and how um, I think it's it's a huge part of the job description, which I don't think is, is often um, alluded to. Mm. Yeah, that's definitely something that um, is needed to be looked at. You almost have to have a uh, kind of a love-hate relationship with rejection. Um, you got to have to do yeah, work and coincide with it. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a strange sort of... Um, this is this, this theater maker, this playwright in the UK, and he said to me early on, he was like, he wasn't talking to me, but he was he sort of said a roundabout way, he said, you know, actors are the are the toughest sons of bitches of like, I'm around because you, you know, and yet at the same time, you have to have that, um, you have to have that vulnerability or that sort of empathy to be, you know, to be good. And um, so it's sort of, uh, it's a really weird juggling act because you have to be super businesslike and see it for what it is, which is, um, uh, you know, so much of it is out of your control. Mm. Um, and the variables are completely, you know, often you'll find the project never even got made, you know. So there's, there's so many things that um, versus the love of it, the commitment, the, um, uh, you know, the, the total sort of, um, of course you care, but it's that, it's a strange thing. I've got, I've tried to um, cultivate a sort of a process where I give it my best, but then once it's done, it's kind of, it's, it, it, it's, it's done. Um, and, uh, you know, it's over um, until you're here and, and maybe you're here. Mm. Great if you do, but the, 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 the waiting for the, you know, it's like, it's like a um, terrible date. It's like a terrible, terrible life of dating, endless dates. Do they get bad? Do, do they treat you bad? You know, the one you really want probably treats you terribly. You get uh, called up for a second date. Yeah. <laughs> Fourth recall, you know. I think there's a uh, definitely now a, a newfound respect for um, not only yourself but anybody in the business who uh, would be uh, submitting reels and uh, hoping to uh, get the uh, get the audition, get the role. Uh, I think there's a newfound respect for that now, knowing the kind of the other side of it. Yeah, I mean, I think that, uh, you, you know, at the same time, you're very lucky to be given a, a, an opportunity to, to self tape I mean, I don't mean to be um, too sort of, uh, you know, heroic about it. Um, it but, but, but yes, um, you give it your all. It's just, it's just a, it's a skill, you know, it's a skill that you get used to and you, and you, and, and you have to care. Otherwise, what would be the point, you know, um, and, and you have to be able to let, let it go. And that is, it's, it's a strange sort of juxtaposition, it's a strange um, kind of two art seem you know, sort of oxymoronic that seem like at odds with each other. Um, yeah. Dating. <laughs> um, next on my list, we have a question from someone named Sorrowful Shabby. Was there a pivotal moment that made you pursue acting? Um, 
Well, only when I had a gun to my head in the sense that I was 23 and I'd been, I'd, I'd done lots of, uh, I'd been very lucky to go to some good, you know, some good schools, some schools which had a thriving drama department and, um, mm. and, and teachers who cared and teachers who were super talented and, and, and treated you, made you think that, that it was something that could be pursued as a career. Mm. Um, I had one, especially when I was about uh, 16, 17, 18. Um, but then again, I was a bit too scaredy cat to go into it at the after school because, you know, it's uh, in the UK, you kind of finished around 18 and then you can take a year out and then you go to a un university. Um, and I went to uni because I didn't know whether I wanted. I think my parents came and spoke with actually this teacher I was talking about. And I just wasn't sure. And he sort of said, well, no, if you're not sure, then just. So I went to, um, I, mean, I took a year uh, abroad, uh, I, I took a year out, did lots of, um, you know, cl cliche stuff, but um, I went to Goa. Um, and uh, uh, and then I went, I studied history and German at mm. uh, Edinburgh University for four years and lived in Berlin for one of those. Um, and at the end of that, it was push, push come to shove. And I'm one of those people who, Am I left like this now? Mm. I'm one of the, those people, certainly that back then, that wouldn't make a decision unless I, a decision I didn't want to make unless I absolutely had to. And, you know, it was either that, it was that uh, now or then in that situation of do I go to drama school? Because, um, yeah, just there was a window. And thankfully, I managed to get into to one. I applied to, you know, seven or eight. So it was more of a um, uh, an overtime thing, but uh, would you say yes, that year I'd off was a big one? I'd love to say it was the road road to Damascus. What's that sort of biblical moment where he pulls from his horse and sees the light? Well, Alan Rickman is about the only thing that happened to me on that in that on that front. Um, no, uh, it was over over overdue. Yeah, it was push comes to shove. It was um, it was. Uh, what are you going to do? Mm. Your, your choices have run out. So mm. I, so I entered, I entered uh, the profession, and of course now I realise it's never too late. Um, but uh, at twenty six, and um, mm. yeah, yeah, uh, interesting. Yeah, uh, I like that. Uh, that quote you just said: "It's never too late um, to." pursue what you want to seems like there's a um uh a thing where um i don't want to say people but maybe like there's a uh, a society uh standard of like you can't do this after a certain age but it's like well why not <laughs> um there's no there's no there's no cutoff there there certainly isn't um i certainly didn't become an i know i mentioned alan Rickman, but I certainly didn't become an actor for with with the greatest of respect um to try and you know become the next Leonardo DiCaprio. I I I I was my my love and admiration was was towards your you know your Anthony Hopkins um, you know your Emma Tom you know your, your Jodie Foster your your older you know these actors in their forties their fifties who were just at the top of their game. Uh, Philip Seymour Hoffman, you know these 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 powering performances is 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 where you know I was always completely drawn in by and so inspired by. Um, so yes, I it's certainly not. Um, I certainly you know wasn't wasn't looking to not. I mean, there's so many terrific um, younger actors, but those were the those were my gods. Those were my kind of, um, you know, heroes. Hmm. It's um, yeah. Just uh, just knowing that there was a um, um, a push term to shove, but uh, it was something that you wanted to do. In in the end, that's um, that's um, huge, and I think a lot of people would uh, agree that. They're very happy you went uh, in the direction that you did, myself included. So, um, oh. <laughs> another critical, 
critical success roll there. Um, now I just need a third. <laughs> um, this one is from uh, Jameson the Warlock. Do you have a favorite line as Roland? Maybe one that you've heard in game already, or one that just that you remember? Adoring applause. You're too kind. <laughs> I just, I love, it's just great. The writing on that, you know, just hit, and can you imagine the arrogance, the level of self-belief to be not only here adoring applause, but to then announce it and then thank them graciously. It's just so ridiculous. It's just wonderful. <laughs> the thing that, um, I don't know if you remember, um, but I asked Andrew um, if there was any improvised lines and he just went right for a straight up no he said it was all written you know perfectly it was all um thought of ahead it was all streamlined it was all just very to the point and uh would you say that was the same with roland i would absolutely concur mm. there was never a moment where where uh, it was even no um no, the writing it didn't come up from 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 that point of view um no mm. which is um really um tells myself and i imagine many others now that uh there was a lot of thought that was put ahead of uh the the creation of these characters uh line wise and uh um to to quote andrew he said it was very poetic so um you can definitely uh, receive that for sure. Yes, some of Roland's lines could could be could be called poetic. Some of them are just rude, I think. <laughs> <laughs> well, that makes uh, that makes Roland Roland though. There's it a uh, Roland being the oldest. There's a um, sort of like taking on like a leadership role. Um, Trying to step into yeah. like a spotlight and needing to make decisions, um, and maybe that was how some of the writing was uh, was placed was needing to not only look after for himself but uh, Cal and Leah as well. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 it's really nice you say this. I'm honestly, I, I think you're you're very good at this. Um, I, <laughs> I do think that was quietly something which I really did think was pretty cool um, and, and how lucky to play a role like that the, the you know the un, what is that Shakespearean quote some people have some people are born great some people have um, seek greatness and some people have greatness thrust upon them mm. and I uh, you know it's a bit like I love those you know they're, they're, they're really interesting kind of archetypes or um, the reluctant here you know I always think of um, and Saving Private Ryan. Have you seen that that movie? Mm -hmm. um, so the sort of you know the Tom Hanks character. What is he? He's a teacher or whatever, and then he's he's made this 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 cat. You know, well, I forget his rank, but you know, let's call him the captain of this of this platoon or group group of soldiers. And it's just such a brilliant, brilliantly told story from that character's point of view. He is good at it, mm. but he didn't want to be there. Um, Love the way that I've now like compared Roland to to, <laughs> to Tom Hanks's character in Super Run. But it is, I think you 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 touched on it really nicely there. It's just that that he's capable of it, but but there's not something necessarily he was was planning planning on. Mm. Yeah, and you um, with you mentioning sort of uh, with Tom Hanks, you know, he plays the role well, but. Um... It, it makes me think of uh, uh, Tim Curry in uh, the movie It when he played Pennywise the Clown. Tim is terrified, deathly terrified of clowns. When he got suited up, he couldn't look at himself in the mirror. That's how terrified of, him, of himself he was, but he played an excellent, excellent job. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, credit and kudos to that, being able to um, be placed in a... Uh, 
a, uh, a situation that you're not exactly comfortable in, breaking that uh, that comfort level. Tim, I should have mentioned, he belongs in the, in the pantheon alongside Alan. Mm. Um, not wanting to do his own CGI, he wanted to be his own character. That was something that was neat as well. Um, which is uh, another credit to you, be placed as well. Yes, I mean, I I I, I came close to, but then I, I got I, I got ill and couldn't I, I couldn't I couldn't do the do the job. I mean, it was a sort of it wasn't a huge budget; they couldn't move stuff, but it was a, to, to to play. It was a sort of action feature film. I um, mean, I did loads of uh, like um, like training and some boxing and stuff. It was amazing. It was a great great opportunity. But um, yeah, it was um. It was a similar thing in the sense that we did these stunts and stuff like that. And I learned very quickly. I was like, I'd love to do as much as I can, but if there is a stunt double. <laughs> I won't say no. <laughs> no, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. And I wonder if I, Tim and I, I wonder if it yeah. could mm. be seen maybe one day. <laughs> <laughs> um. I am probably going to mispronounce this, and I am terribly sorry in advance if I do, but this is from someone named Lean Hellmans. I hope that's correct. Um, did you have a favorite part acting out or playing Roland? Um, I quite liked being in the bar. Hmm. Um, the bar scene with the, um, you know, being rude to the, uh, to the, yeah. the, to the to the barkeep and yeah, I mean it's always been a sort of dr a, a dream, a dream, a, 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 an aim to play a, a kind of slightly drunkard kind of you know self pitying morose kind of you know I, I those characters are, are, are fa you know fascinating and horrifying in equal measure and it it was nice to be able and we were doing it you know because you're looking at the player the players behind so it, it was. It was. It really was done like that, so I couldn't really see what I was doing, which was quite quite fun in some ways. So, you know, how can you? And yeah, you you know, if you are really in it, and I was, I couldn't wait to be in it. Um, you know, if you're <laughs> several sheets of the wind, and you know, someone comes in and they, you, know, you don't want to talk to them. <laughs> you know, it's great to it's a great thing to embody. You know how you you know embody that in your in your kind of body language and stuff it was that was really fun um mm. and just being rude to the people behind the bar i mean you know i'd you know we'd love to do that in real life but no no we wouldn't but <laughs> but you know you can imagine being in a situation where you you, you know you he because he's it's a, ter it's a combination of being self-pitying having a high opinion of one you know it's a terrible comp plus alcohol they uh Alcohol played a little bit of a motivator there, maybe. <laughs> well, not, 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 it wasn't method, but, um, but I think that those scenes, the, 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 I think the Arabellum dry has, has been flowing. Hmm. Was there a, um, was there a process you had to take to get into the mindset of that? Like you yourself? In, in terms of that specific scene? Scenes like that. Yeah. Um, a little bit of a switch up. Just, yeah, I think it just happened. Like going back to what you were saying before, in terms of just visualizing, you know, a little bit like what you were saying in terms of um, those connections with, you know, my brother or my sister. I mean, mm. and if you don't, if you, you know, like yourself, you, you don't have happen to have a sibling, then you know, what do you substitute in? Is there a, a, a very close personal friend or something? And then you know, I've not. I have had a drink in my life, so I sort of know. Um, and thinking maybe of friends, I mean, thinking maybe of, or, or I did definitely think of sort of flatmates, drama, school friends. You know, I sort of because, of course, the most important thing you need to do probably is uh, populate who you're talking to um, um, because they'll give you everything. Um, you know, you don't want to be. The last thing you want to be is self-aware. You know, the last thing you want to be is um, goes back to that old thing of I think we were mentioning before we before we started this interview of 
woe betide the theatre company which decides that it's a great idea to use live animals on stage because I guarantee you the paying public will be much more interested in the cat than the uh, actors um, because there's no, you know, no, no fat on that bone. It's pure kind of focus. And anyway, point being is, is that um, going back to the bar scene, I think just knowing who that person might be who came in or whatever, you know, kind of really, really trying to, um, you know, uh, imagine being, being inebriated, but also, you know, your attitude to that person, you mm. know, where do they rank and why would that annoy you or why would that, I think that helps. There's a lot of imagination that would have to go with interacting with characters directly because it's likely just you. It goes back to what we were saying in terms of theater Our... being a fantastic transferable skill because mm. and just any sort of um i mean often with you know even with self tapes you might be acting with someone who isn't an actor some poor poor soul maybe a long suffering partner maybe a flatmate maybe a you know someone's been roped in um or a casting director who are often brilliant but sometimes you know they 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 they, they, they might not uh be really they might not have, you know be really prepared and all the rest of it so you've got to generate a lot of that stuff yourself you've got to not direct yourself but you you know you really have to sort of um endow that, that person or setting with the qualities that it that it, that it, that it needs if they're not there in terms of the job and that uh you know part of the uh I guess part of the process, as hard as it, you know, um, is, sounds, you know, it's um, one thing that separates, you know, good from great, and being able to, yeah, have that imagination process is uh, is an incredible feat and skill to learn. Another critical role there, Sam. <laughs> That's the third one. I mean, I can't, I can't see the chat. Are people agreeing with me here? I mean, I feel completely kind of like bamboozled by these critical success roles. There's um, a, a lot of people are very, very excited. Um, a lot of uh, enjoying <laughs> the question. Critical, critical role streak. What do you guys think? How was the, uh, how was the three nat 20s? Do you guys agree with, uh, with George? <laughs> Is that yeah, a lingo? Because yes. I'm still learning. A nat 20. Nat 20, yep. Nat standing for natural? Natural, yep. Got it, thank you. Crit 20, nat 20, let's go. Very smooth crit. Uh, it seems like, uh, seems like there's a, uh, a resounding, resounding yes yeah. and agreement. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um... I think that uh, does it for a lot of the uh, populated questions uh, that came in through Twitter throughout the week. Um, how do you feel about taking uh, questions from the chat? Right here, right now. That sounds good to you. Once, once again, I would be, it would be honored. I might just quickly go and get a, uh, a glass of water if I, if I may. I think, uh, I think a five minute break here seems appropriate and then we can go right into uh, Right into some live questions. That's great. Yeah, quarter past. Fantastic. Okay, for sure. Let's go ahead and take a quick little break, and uh, when we return, we'll uh, we'll take on more questions straight from the chat. And we are back. Welcome back, everybody. Thanks for uh, the quick five minute break to uh, allow the hydration. Uh, it looks like George has found yeah. a cat in the uh, last five yeah. minutes or so. <laughs> yeah, hydration. Uh, George just went in. In true Roland style, knock back two double vodka tonics. And here's my cat. This is um, this is one of the cats. This is Kia, not Rickman. I don't know where Rickman is, but Rickman is named after Adam Rickman. <laughs> uh, two cats, Rickman and uh, this one's Kia. Kia, yeah, yeah. Thank you so much for uh, for sharing. Chat is uh. Going just as wild as me, uh, I uh, when I first sat yeah, down. This is, this is 
quite the... Come on. <laughs> He's a very, very, very happy... You might be able to hear his purr. He might be purring. He's a bit... I don't know... He's quite like Ronan in the sense that he he's very um does his own thing his way. He's very stubborn. And he takes a while to like people, but he's actually very, very needy deep down. <laughs> he's actually <laughs> slightly um slightly uh what's the word? Um no, he he's actually a, a big old softy, really. I imagine that um there's going to be uh, s some artist somewhere is going to uh, have a roll and grind with uh, both Rickman and Kia next to Roll. Well, there more than there he is. <laughs> you hear that, Kia? Yeah, <laughs> that's right. You got me lost in thought. So adorable. <laughs> <laughs> do you have pets, Sam? I do not. Uh, my um, the cat that I had uh, passed away recently, and I just haven't um, haven't had a recovery since. So I've been waiting. Yeah. If uh, if there's a time in the future, I definitely want to make sure that um, I am ready to put all my uh, effort and emotion into the, uh, the 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 next pet that I get. Yeah, it's taking to take time a bit. Yeah, it was um a little over a year now, so I'm I'm definitely taking my my I'm definitely taking my time on the yeah. the recovery process. So I want to make sure that I'm able to invest properly and uh you know not uh get impacted with emotions or say the wrong name. So I want to make sure to uh give the proper love to the next pet uh, that comes along my way. That's very good. Well, two great things: games, gaming, and cats. Can't can't argue with that combo. Not at all. <laughs> nope. <laughs> um. So, uh, questions from chat. How are you feeling mm. about that? Oh, exhil exhilarated. Yeah. Um, are they not safe for work? Um, I'm listening or looking for <laughs> not listening. I'm looking for uh, questions that the folks want to uh, want to ask. A um, little bit of a stream delay, and I imagine folks are uh, typing away. Do see uh, quite a few already, and we'll um, pick one out from Vlad the Implier. Speaking of Andrew and George in the same interview, um, if Raphael was to offer Roland uh, a contract and it involved um, Al and Leah, would you take a deal from the devil? I don't think even with a few arabellum dry in him i don't think roland would i think he 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 much as he hates to admit it i think he would stick st stick a stick um up for his uh brother and sister i think he'd re he reluctantly not choose them that's a um um yeah i i feel like roland would be very um i don't want to say stubborn but like set in his ways to like he would want to do it he would want to be the yeah. the one uh yes I mean, stubborn would not be how uh, the, 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 that that's rick that's rickman um <laughs> roland would be d doing the right thing the right way mm. doing the making the correct decision not stubborn just he's just right that's uh <laughs> he's just right um here you are. look you got you got lucky here's your here's the, uh, the second. we are lucky today <laughs> rickman rickman we are lucky today 
Rickman's whiskers never really grew for some reason. It's strange. But he's 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 far more like um Cal or Leo. He's far more impulsive and he's 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 ever he's been much more friendly and sort of you see is what you get. Seems there's a lot of uh role in Cal and Leah that uh has been removed from the game and uh has uh joined you personally. <laughs> Uh, let's see if I could find another question in here. Um, one that's a little bit uh, more of a silly question, but uh, we'll ask it anyways because silliness is sometimes fun. Uh, Capybara edits to George, having modded for you since the start of this journey on Twitch. I do have one question for Happy. you. Which mm. graphics card do you have? I don't think you've ever mentioned it before. <laughs> <laughs> well, Cappy, f first and foremost, thank you because wouldn't be here without you. Yeah. Um, fourteen, a, a, a little known uh, graphics card called the fourteen ninety Founders Edition. It's no, no biggie. Forty ninety Founders Edition. Wow, I don't think you've ever mentioned that, that is... before. Yeah, no, mm. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't gloat. It's not in my nature. Um, a a actual question for me is, is it the large one or is it like the sort of the smaller one? Because I've seen like graphics cards that are, are bigger than my case and my case is probably yeah you know, a, a foot or something. It's huge. Um, but some of them get, you know, massive. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is, is I mean, I, I was, uh, I was dealing with millimeters in terms of fitting it in to the case. Uh, the fact that's why I got the founders because the other ones, I mean, there was once again there was a you know lack of stock, wasn't there? And it's it's it, it, some of them were coming in like a surfboard. Um, I just had my graphics card replaced recently, and I have a thirty sixteen now. Anything, anything Very higher. Respectable. Like anything higher than the 3060 was just too big for my case and uh it's it does the job and yeah some of these uh some of these graphics cards come in uh like absolute pool noodles they're they're long and lanky and huge and <laughs> yeah i mean I'd, I'd i'd love to be part of a um a bit like sort of it's a therapy or something a sort of graphics card um you know support group and um, i'd love to sit around and talk about you know why i felt like i had to get a 4090 you know um i think that i part of me was like well i could go on holiday or i could just get a graphics card which can have such nice graphics that i you know i'm basically you know there <laughs> Whenever I want to be, but I mean, I, I that might be taking the sort of imagine Im imagination side of things a bit too far. <laughs> um, if Roland had a pet, what do you think Roland would have as a pet? A cat, a dog, D and D, um, made up D and D critter. What do you think Roland would have as a pet? That's interesting. I don't know. I feel like it would be some like a creature that would help him with some of the sort of, you know, runnings of Ramesses Tower or Sorcerer's Sundries or something. I think it would be a, I'm thinking a sort of, you know, sort of shoulder some kind of a, but probably not, probably not a, um, you know, a fluffy parakeet or it's a parrot, something that would probably be something more sort of ghoulish, but, mm. but, but, but subservient to him maybe with wings and would just sort of fetch various vials. Maybe, maybe. Grab a book or something. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. Someone says, get this man an imp. <laughs> mm. There we go. Uh, we figured it out together. <laughs> um, if you could pick any of the main companion roles to play, so you've run into... Uh, Astarian so far, you've run into Lazel, um, 
any of the main companion characters that you've run into so far, uh, which would you pick and why? And they also say, uh, thank you so much for your time with us. You had to, uh, you had to voice one. Well, I mean, I think this is partly why I had a, um, uh, you know, a crisis of confidence the other day on the stream because I killed the Starion, and I think that I've been quietly looking forward so much to Neil's performance in that mm. character's story. And it got but snuffed it out said, very quickly. It said, I mean, I don't, he's not dead. He's not dead. He's wounded. But it said, you know, this <laughs> companion has permanently left your party. Came up on the screen, Sam. Anyway, so I'd love to. I think I think a star in because I mean, sass and sort of you know, uh, um, any sort of. Uh, I remember my drama teacher, the, the head of, the head of my, head of acting. She was head of acting mm. at my drama school. She sort of took me into her office as we were coming towards the end of the training, and she said, "You know, darling, you're you're you know, let's talk about your calling cards." Um, and she was like. Urbane, darling, urbane. Um, I didn't. I don't think I even knew. What, I don't think I even knew what urbane meant. But it, that that kind of, um, you know, slightly sort of. You know, I don't know what I don't know what the word the word is, but sort of slightly sort of uh, you know looking down their nose. Astarian just seemed like a re. He seems like a like. I mean, Neil's knocked it out of the park, obviously, but it's just like. Fascinating to, to play that character with all of those sort of like ways around all those all those words and situations. I can definitely see some similarities for sure. There's a um a, a part where self kind of takes over. Um, Starian kind of looks out for himself. Roland looks out for himself, unless it's Caller Leo. This uh, th there's a self. Mm -hmm. Um that is uh, assigned with both characters. Um, there's definitely a cockiness that is uh, assigned with both characters. Um, so I, I can definitely see the similarities for sure. Mm -hmm. Yes. But, uh, it is one that relates the most. <laughs> Someone cameo George to do Astarian lines right now. <laughs> I might be the one to do that. <laughs> Yeah, I mean Neil. I I really would love to meet Neil one day, and um, and he's just done so many, so much other great stuff, isn't he? He's a real, a real, um, you know, fr from my limited experience with mocap, and it's just he's a, he's just had such a amazing, amazing uh, career. Mm. And he's very generous. He's a, I love the way he supports, you know, all the other people. He's always doing shout outs, um. Yeah, he's a real, real uh, team team player. Um, I think this one uh, actually really goes in line with um, with uh, what you're talking about there. Did you have a chance to uh, either collaborate or run into any of the other uh, Baldur's Gate three cast, especially Cal or Leo? No, as I was mentioning before, you you go in, you go into the your little pot, your little pod, and you do your thing, and then you're out. Um, but since since uh, the wonderful mods, um, Cappy, and since people reached out and and things like this with you, um, you get to know people via social media via, um, and that's pretty cool. You know, I think that's a really amazing side of it really i mean that could never have happened before mm. um so yeah so i sort of i'm getting to know uh people that way um and i i, I mean it's it's new territory so it's i mean not not getting to know people but the use of sort of um social media um in this in this way and and streaming and stuff it is it you know a lot of it is not something that i've done much of in the past so i find it really novel um, but I'm also a little bit sort of, you know, when you do something, I mean, the streaming I'm talking about more, I suppose, but, you know, something you've not necessarily done before. It's, it's always quite, uh, it's a little bit of apprehension because you don't, it's, uh, it's slightly new, new territory. But I mean, I've got to say, I think it's an absolute winner. I completely love it. You know, it's like, 
but doing it with the people who are passionate and 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 so supportive and funny and uh, um it makes it so great i mean i can't imagine a better better sort of gaming experience i'm sort of relishing it in some ways because you know playing this incredible story with all its tip you know corners and 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 u-turns and all the rest of it and it's not just me i'm doing it with all these people so who love the game and so it's 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 i don't know what it is but it's it's got that real um energy and and and, and it's i don't know i don't know whether it's closer to doing a you know theater with a with a live audience or whatever but it's a really i i i'm really enjoying the um the experience thus far um and collabing hopefully with maybe some other other cast members over stream maybe to answer to go back to the question yeah uh do you have any uh ideals that you would uh think you would like to collab or work with uh Raphael and I no I don't I don't I don't I mean I just, <laughs> I'm just I'm I'm working with a few of these wonderful wonderful people Kathy being one but just um yeah just sort of seeing what how it works really um I'm just sort of finding my feet with um Rolanda hmm. um but but you know it won't be too long before Rolanda might be ready to to work with other people yeah I I I I think that's awesome I I think that's something exciting to explore in the coming coming days and weeks. I uh, I, I know uh, Andrew is not the most social media present, um, mm. so I don't know if he would run into uh, this at all. But with all the Raphael mentions, don't 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 make me email uh, him this video here. She <laughs> she she should be in no doubt of the of the ex extraordinarily high regard <laughs> someone such as someone so so lowly as myself holds him. No, um, seriously, I you know I, I loved your your interview was um, you know he's just such an amazing guy and um, yeah. No, yeah, I, I with the with the co 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 collab, I think it's this could be quite funny, really. I mean, I'm also interested as to as a you know going back proud gamer, um, whether there's other games, you know, and there's a there's there's an idea that maybe I've got with one of the other um, NPC characters, um, but it wouldn't be it wouldn't be Baldur's Gate. I mean, I I've been asking a few people on the streams and getting some ideas, but yeah. I mean, I'm loving just doing Baldur's Gate, but there, you know, there might be some other games as well. It could be could be interesting to to play around with. Seems there's um a lot of interest to have uh have Roland and Raphael in the same room. And, uh, one that would be very interesting to see. Mm. And it seems like uh, Andrew was also quite interested in uh, uh, collabing with other uh, the Baldur's Gate cast as well. So. Uh, seems like there's a uh whether there's the same demand for dear old roland but uh, i can well understand people chomping at the raphael bit <laughs> i would be i i myself i don't know about anybody else i can't speak for them but i would love would love to see that one day and uh maybe maybe a future interview between uh the the, the three us three one day. Mm. Well, you keep rolling those nat nat twenties, Sam. Well, you know, you, the, the, the world's your oyster. <laughs> I've got three. For, uh, for, <laughs> for anyone who's well, counting been, at home, we have three. There have been there have been plenty more since then, and you know that have been. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, a lot of people are saying I would explode if this were to happen. Um. Would love to see Roland and Raphael. I, I, I too. I would love to see that. I think there's a lot of, uh, um, a lot of things to, uh, to learn from, and also, um, uh, kind of bounce ideas off. I think that would be really interesting. Um, Let's see if we have other questions. Feel free if I if I've missed anything. By the way, um, you guys are very excited and uh, don't stop anytime soon. But I may have missed a question or two, so feel free to uh, 
reinsert your questions if I missed it. Um, were there any other video game characters that you drew inspiration from when you played Roland? Um, I know that um, by looking at credits, you were in uh, a, a game called Vampire the Masquerade, I believe it's called. Mm -hmm. um, was there any other inspirations uh, for Roland, perhaps video game-wise? Yeah, I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think. I mean, I don't think there are any specific video game ones. But I suppose, you know, you look. I now I think video games. You look at it with the same, with the same way you would a movie role or a, or a TV role. Um, Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I like the whole wizard thing. I mean, it's great. I miss the whole Lord of the Rings, you know, and I, I don't think I've ever auditioned for that kind of thing. But it is, I like that whole uh, that character, you know, that world. Because mm. you've got superpowers, don't you? So so that allows for that level of arrogance. But no, I, I can't mm. think of any specifics that I thought of um, with regard to Roland. I think there's just that, it is that, that, that tradition maybe of those um slightly uh you know that lineage of actors who you know play those characters who have a pretty high level of self-regard mm -hmm. you know I, i'm thinking of alan rickman etc you know that i think there is a great you know history of those characters which you know which i've always looked up to yeah that's um what you were mentioning earlier, there's the um, that inspiration, but there is also the uh, coming from a uh, you mentioned at the uh, beginning a tall um, uh, he's an aspiring wizard, so I guess learned man trying to get into the position of uh, becoming greater, but he's already feeling great as well at the same time, but is always uh, wanting to get into a position of uh, of more and um that character development i'm not spoiling anything for you i'll uh drop that there but that character development is incredible um and i am very much looking forward to seeing your reactions on stream to uh once you see that playing mm. out because i saw your reaction when you first saw roland and the way that i received it was you recognize the character right away and there was a little bit of emotion that was attached to it, but it got played off in a little bit of comedy, too. So I know that there was uh, a, a lot of uh, feelings that were hitting in that, uh, in, the, in that moment. <laughs> I was able to see yeah, it, for sure. Well, yeah, well, you know. Uh, it was that handsome uh, teeth lane. <laughs> as, uh, yes, yes, yes. Another sort of... A, a nat 20. Um, I, I sort of, you know, the, the English kind of shows sort of you know not you know being you know whole withheld or whatever um but i i think it's because i was i was experiencing it with you know other other lovers of the of the of the game and and and, and i was there because of you know that whole thing with the streaming and things like that um it was special because it was also you know it was it was ref reflective of 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 that as well it's sort of um it was really nice to experience it with other people, so to mm. speak. Because uh, you know, if I'd done it on my own, it would have been oh neat, you know. Yeah. Oh, and actually, often it's horrible, you know. But the yeah, it's just it's just incredibly lucky to be uh, part of a project which 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 materialized in the way it materialized, um, and you know. There are so many characters, and you know, Roland is is is, is a, a cog in a much greater machine. But it's very nice to um, to be a part of that, and and the community is 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 the the primary you know driver of all of that, you know. Mm. And it's it, it's been a it's been a the gift that keeps giving. It it really is such a it's a very 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 lucky thing to happen to the 
to, to the, the lucky VAs involved. <laughs> I think um, a big part of it is, w without a doubt, most people have probably seen um, the beginning scenes. They've probably played through the game one, maybe two, maybe even more times than that. But I think what makes it special is even if someone has gone through the motions and seen certain cutscenes, characters, I think going through it with someone who hasn't before is almost as if it's a new, like them experiencing the game for the first time again, um, to be able to see the reactions that someone who has never seen it before seeing it. Yeah, I think that's a, I, like uh, that. I think that's a big, uh, a big reason that. Uh, there's such yeah, a driving force penny, in the that community. Penny, that penny dropped a little, a little, a little while into it, and I thought, oh, I can, I can see, I can see why this is valid. Because I mean, I've, I've, done, I've, I've, I've looked at a couple of other people's playthroughs, and I, I've felt that myself. And it, it's, it's, it's the nature of the, the, the story, isn't it? That you kind of, you can see it again with fresh eyes through someone else's experience. You know. Yeah. Yeah, and it's uh, it's it's a driving force to um, experience it again, and um, yeah, for uh, someone else being able to witness it, it's almost like they're experiencing the game for the first time too. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you were to play it by yourself, you would go, "Oh, I've I've done this already. I've seen this already." Yeah, yeah. yeah I really like that about Twitch. I have I have to say, I think <clears throat> those precious childhood memories of gaming with friends or with another friend you know just happy to watch is 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 is, is much missed and it's great to, to to be able to free break that in the in a in a in another guise uh with with uh, the wonders of modern technology modern technology is going crazy fast but it's also um uh it's also the future what's going to be taking over uh, different means of outlets uh, kind of phase out a little bit one thing and uh, you do something new with new tech and combine it with the old um, it's a new way of delivering media um, being able to share because you know there's, there's only one you and there's X amount of uh, people that are behind you all the way all over the world and because of uh because of twitch because of youtube we're able to share this moment rather than one convention or um such like that so being able to collectively have this it's great it's very cool yeah that's very cool <laughs> um speaking of conventions uh do you have uh plans to attend conventions either locally or north america uh yeah so i think that um my the agent who sort of booked me the job i think they are looking into uh comic con in may i don't know where that what will come of that but um i'd very much like to uh to 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 be there but we'll we'll just have to see i um I'd love to, you know, because I, I've really enjoyed, um, I really enjoyed the, um, I did a Streamily um, signing and it was a very happy experience and just speaking with people and stuff and it was really fun. It was really great. And to be able to do that in the flesh would be uh, amazing. Um, that was a new experience. Yeah, it would be great. It would be great to, to you know, to share all of this um, in person it's just a lovely it's a lovely um side to to the to the you know to the work to the job mm. yeah see a lot of people right. saying come here come to this place so just as a uh um a suggestion a lot of conventions what's that sorry <laughs> Oh, I'm unable to hear you. I did hear uh I did hear a cat meow and uh it definitely uh, caught me off guard. <laughs> Can you okay? I can't hear you now, yes. <laughs> Sorry, what well, I missed you. I I missed that bit. Sorry, I my my AirPods died. 
I was, uh, caught me off guard. <laughs> I heard a, uh, a very enthusiastic, uh, cat meow, and, uh, it definitely, it definitely caught me off guard. <laughs> That was Kier. Kier, like Roland, when he he doesn't make himself known very often, but when he does, it's loud. <laughs> Definitely felt the presence. <laughs> um. Oh shoot, where was my train of thought? Um. Oh right. Uh, talking about conventions. Everyone was uh, saying, "Come to, come to this place. Come to that place." A suggestion. A lot of conventions take uh, suggestions and requests. So if you know that if there's a convention, you know, three, four, five, six months in advance, um, they usually take open suggestions. So if you want to see, you want to see George Taylor, you want to see Roland close by, toss a suggestion to your local convention, and usually that uh, can uh, have the ball rolling. So I, I, I know. Or or indeed the ball Roland. <laughs> indeed. But um, a lot of conventions do take suggestions if it's an uh, far off enough in advance. So if uh, if you'd like, my... that helps. Oh, that's really great. No, I, I am. I've been speaking to, to my agent about it. And um, yeah, we're, we're definitely hatching a, hatching a plan. I love that. That's uh, that's very good news for the uh, for the Roland Nation. <laughs> Roland, the the Rolandites, the <laughs> finest nation. It's um, yeah, it's definitely something that uh, that people want to see. I think it's um, I imagine cameo and streamly is a uh, is an insight to that. Yeah, it's just it's just a I mean it. It's one of those things, you know, Star Wars. It's just being lucky enough to be part of a uh, world, you know, that people love and believe in. It's, it's, it's pretty cool. It's very cool. And I don't think, if I'm brutally honest, I don't think a lot of us had any idea how lucky we were or how, how you know, what it was and what, what it meant to people and what, it, you know, what what it was going to deliver. Mm. Uh, so I think we're, we're I think, I think, speak for myself but still kind of you know coming to terms with that really and sort of appreciating it mm. it's um yeah it's definitely interesting you said um things will be years off in advance and i can kind of i can't personally speak on that but uh, when it comes to music albums are usually recorded 18 to 24 months in advance music can mm. definitely change and evolve in that quick amount of time and you don't really know what's going to be popular around that time there could be a new genre that's going to be taking over there could be something that uh changes the way that we view the industry and you don't really know that 18 to 24 months or in this case years two three four years in advance um being able to um you can't really predict that Just like you can't predict what Rickman is going to do in the mirror. <laughs> Wanted a uh, a bit of an appearance of... there. <laughs> yes, I'd be a bit annoyed if uh, there's more interest in Kieran Rickman, but I would understand. <laughs> this is what you were saying earlier with um, cats being able to take over. They're definitely, you know, there's, there's, they're the, the real deal. I mean, but, but, you know, they're gonna, you're gonna watch the cat. You even Alan Rickman, they'll, they'll watch the cat. I would. This is um, something that someone said, and I actually uh, agree with this as well. The shelves in the back, um, for uh, for the cats to climb. That's really, uh, that's really interesting. I like that. Yes. Yes, I think it's important. Um, they don't like. I think they get stressed if they've got too much time on the ground. They're not. I mean, I don't know how much of this is true, but they, they, they're not. They don't like the vulnerability of being on the floor all the time. Mm. Um, especially if they spend a lot of time, which these ones do indoors, and so therefore having the um, 
the ability to get up high, I think is very good for their, their stress levels and their, their sort of mental well-being. They don't, they don't, they seem a lot calmer up before and after there was a big difference. Yeah. Hiding being another one, climbing and hiding. Um, yeah. I think, you know, they're nocturnal. They're not the apex predator. You know, there's people, there's people after them. It's, um, it's really nice to see. Yeah. Um, I saw an interesting comment. Um, someone said, I've seen some other Baldur's Gate 3 actors get into cosplay of their characters. Uh, Fraser dressed as a uh, demon uh, to a recent event. Would you have any interest in cosplaying Roland <laughs> or Rolanda? They've put in brackets to a convention if you had the opportunity. <laughs> um, I can't say it's been on the top of my thought, thought process but never say never never say never actors love a good costume mm. they love a good costume um i'll give it some thought i mean i'm glad that roland got upgraded from the rather drab early access outfit i think that that sort of like metal uh, i don't know what you call that thing but i i i'd be much more inclined to cosplay um Roland now that he's got a slightly more befitting mm. uh, grand outfit um yeah yeah a lot of people were mentioning that earlier i was uh speaking to the side of my uh my peripherals and they were the early access to um not good enough yeah not good enough for Roland. <laughs> needs uh a, a more um i don't want to say regal look but more uh you can say regal, so regal look. Okay, we'll go with regal <laughs> then. <laughs> um, definitely an upgrade, though. Definitely not. The fitting. Um. Yeah, it's uh, it's interesting how the evolution of that uh, came forth, and it it definitely fits the character. I think to be able to um, yeah, have a tire that fits who they are and what they're trying to um present to uh to the player yeah definitely no it would be interesting that I, I love i'm i went shopping with rolanda yesterday and we we've we've been trying some different uh outfits out I, sad you can't do the same with Roland. Hmm. you know i i'm really really sad and and i really want roland to be a, a party member love to recruit Roland to the party. Yeah, God, and then stab him in the belly and then have him leave the party. Roland's a tiefling, not a vampire, thank goodness. <laughs> um, someone wanted to know which game you started with that made you fall in love with gaming. You said you've been a part of gaming yeah. for a while. Great question. Um, well, there's a few, but I think, you know, ones which really hit home. I mean, Command & Conquer was a sort of early one, but mm. I mean, I loved games so much from the early, from from such an early age. Command & Conquer was amazing, incredible. I mean, this is, this is the time when you had them in boxes, great big cardboard boxes with the CD-ROM. Mm -hmm. Theme Park I think was my first, my first love. There's this game called Theme Park. It was incredible. A Total War Shogun hours into that half-life the first half-life mind-blowingly brilliant multiplayer on that fantastic um and then yeah just since then i mean I, the game i've plowed most hours into is um i do like strategy games so and weirdly it's empire total war but heavily modded oh um, yeah 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 and, yeah and total war really needs to to get their act together with the um i mean being being demanding here but the um with the non fantasy, non Warhammer stuff, because they their their games are just amazing, just incredible. Um, but yeah, I'd say probably one of those early ones made me made me see the light. When you mentioned uh, when games were in their boxes and uh, original packaging, that really spoke because um, I collect retro video games. Uh, I've been doing that mm -hmm. for the last year or so, and. Uh, just completed my Pokemon Silver. I got a Pokemon Silver in box, the manual, the game, and I was very, very excited about that. I have a shelf right there of all my, all the stuff I have, have so far. Yeah. 
Have you got Half Life, the orange box of Half Life? I wish. I want that so bad. Um, yeah. This blind I over when I saw my Chrono Trigger. Chrono Trigger was was my jam back in the day. <laughs> is this? Is this? Uh, are you speaking Pokemon? Because I don't. I don't speak Pokemon. I don't understand what you're saying. A uh, strategy game. Um, turn based oh, yeah. combat. Yeah. Oh, what's it called? Chrono Trigger. Okay. And then they had another release later on. It's kind of in Final Fantasy realm. Um, okay. Yeah, because I'm a big strategy. Strategy is where it's at, and I think you know even Panzer Commander, Panzer General Two, yeah, hex based, turn based. Oh, just fantastic. Um, yeah. Command and Conquer. I recognize that. Um. Um. What's it called? Uh, Civilization? Um, yeah, I, I didn't play so much Civilization. No. A little bit of SimCity. Um, but it was, yeah, Half Life was absolutely. I mean, everyone was playing Counter Strike at school. Um, and then the Total War games were just completely. Uh, medieval, Total War Medieval. Oh, my God, it was incredible. Um, but recently, just, I mean, this last year, Obviously, Baldur's Gate, but Alan Wake Two is just incredible, and mm. Cyberpunk. I mean, it's and Red Dead, Red Dead Two. It's just it's so immersive. I just completely l love that level of losing yourself in it. Yeah, it's um. That's the thing with Baldur's Gate is that it's um. It it, it released in a modern time. But it also is a callback to um, not only tabletop D and D, uh, it really reaches uh, fans in that. But um, turn-based combat, turn-based combat, it's not really got really a big highlight recently. And having that callback um, with Baldur's Gate is incredible because uh, old-school Final Fantasy, uh, Chrono Trigger, and Chrono Cross, turn-based combat, um, all. Uh, fantastic 20 25 years ago but uh it all turned into uh to real time combat over the ages but uh turn based combat uh seems to be making a comeback yeah i like it's a different way of doing it isn't it and it gives you that it's 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 there's more pace i mean i'm really glad i've learned to to to, to turn time into turn based in Baldur's gate because i was um I was stealing off. Is his name Aaron or Alan or it's one of the guys in the Grove? Um, I was stealing a huge amount of stuff, um, but I kept on getting caught because I wasn't on in the turn-based side of things. But yeah, <laughs> or poor Aaron. Which was his? What's his? Aaron. 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 Yeah. Or poor Aaron. <laughs> um. Not a question, but it says that uh, AB, can you please say hi to George from his team watching and loving the interview from uh, Blair, Jolly, and Cappy? Wouldn't be here without those guys. <laughs> Love them. <laughs> it's, um, it's incredible to have a team that uh, not only supports but believes in you uh, every step of the way. I'll I'll roll a critical twenty for that. <laughs> um, to to add um, to uh, to social media from earlier. Um, now that we're here on uh, Discord, is there a uh, plan for a Discord server or, uh, for for the Roland Nation? There is, and the team are working uh, uh, night and day. When there's there's mountains are being moved mm. if uh any... there's this uh, it's it's uh, it's under under construction mm -hmm. any assistance is needed on a uh, discord server you let me know i mean that for mm, yeah. people for many years okay well that's great yeah i find I'm, I'm beginning to get to grips with uh with discord it, it takes me back to the uh, the early days of msn messenger <laughs> Classic. Uh, went from MSN to, I guess Skype took over for a while, and uh, yes. Skype turned into uh, 
I've turned it to Discord. Discord kind of took over from there. There we go. <laughs> but um, yeah, no, it's good to hear that there's a a Discord server to um give to the Roland Nation. I think uh, uh, something that a lot of people were uh, would be excited for. That's really tacky. There's a fight going on here. You're in the middle of a. Uh, in the middle of a uh, cat war over there, huh? Yeah, so critical roles and failures happening <laughs> around me. Um, I just wanted to check in with you. How are you for uh, time? Because I know it's late for you, and uh, I don't yes, want to keep you. Probably, yes, I should probably. Um, it's ne nearing nearing my bedtime, so. Um, I was gonna say um, you're you're six hours ahead of me. It's only it's only five p.m. here, so it's. Uh, uh -huh. Quite early afternoon. Um, would uh, one final question be good for you? Of course, yes, that sounds perfect. For people who are wanting to get into the industry, voice acting, um, live action actor, um, do you have uh, anything to say? Advice? Yeah. Um... I think uh, I mean it's it's difficult uh, different in different countries perhaps and um I think with specific to voice to to voice acting I think a a, a reel is very important it certainly mm. is in the UK um and knowing what your kind of what your voice suits so doing research you know not just running into it I think I ran into it quite quickly it was just I I want to just get I want to just get one I want to just get one um and just knowing that that you know it's important to find your voice. So trying out different different um, characters, maybe you're reading different types of book for um, narrative or um, uh, different characters, maybe for animation or gaming or whatever. Um, find what speaks to you know what you're passionate about, but also just be aware that whatever your voice is, um, you, know, you might not be the best judge in terms of what it's you know what what people want or, or think about it so just don't be afraid oh yeah here's here's one bit of maybe remotely useful advice this is that maybe if you've got a um if you're looking for representation you're maybe looking to to get with a an agent or do the work to maybe const uh construct uh create a, a showreel do the research in terms of you know what you might be um appropriate for and then maybe just ask for their advice mm. um because that's a really nice way of kind of starting a, a building, you know, opening a, rather than will you represent me, it's sort of, you know, do you want to, you know, I'd love to know your thoughts. And it doesn't need to be, it can just be that. Um, so yeah, asking asking people for, for, for feedback and, and stuff is a really good way, I think, of, uh, of kind of getting the ball rolling um, from the voice acting point of, point of view. Hmm. Yeah, that's great. Um... There, there needs to be some form of starting point, and I think uh, being in a room, one thing I really like to um, uh, have for myself is being in a room with people who are um, maybe more experienced, smarter, um, whatnot, uh, and mm -hmm. being able to learn off of that. Um, I myself, it's, it sounds harsh, but I, I would take pride being the dumbest person in the room because that means I get to walk out of the door learning something. Um, very much, very much, very. I totally agree with that. I um, and goes back to that idea of you know going and seeing other people's work and you know go out and see other people's stuff, get inspired, get that. That's often when the 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 the, the ideas drop in. Um, and think it can all come from from yourself. Yeah, no, I I I I I, I would agree with you. Although Roland wouldn't. Roland would be he'd be the top dog. Roland would be the room. one. Uh... Roland would be the one that would be teaching, and uh, people have to listen to mm -hmm. to Roland, um, or anybody else is to be uh, to be listened to. <laughs> um, it, we we had this with uh, with Andrew yeah, as a sign off. I was wondering if we could uh, request the same. Could uh, could Roland say goodnight to uh, to his fans and myself as well? No. Sam, 
Good night. <laughs> very direct, very uh very short and sweet. I love that so much. Yes. <laughs> Not too emo emotional. <laughs> Thank you so much. I appreciate that a lot. Um, I really hope to have uh, you on for another show in the future. Maybe uh, a Baldur's Gate uh, 3 collab at some point. co sure. party That'll be a lot of fun, maybe. Yeah, keep me in. It's been, it's been a real, genuine pleasure. Thank you so much for, for, um, for, for putting this together. It's been a real, real pleasure. I appreciate it a lot. Thank you so much for accepting, for joining, and for, uh, for sharing. It's um, you know, absolutely incredible um to uh to give to us um i said to someone on twitter i may be in the position of host or interviewer but i'm also very much a fan as well so it's uh definitely a treat well, for uh, for everybody um you have a streamly and a cameo uh yes the there's a streamly and a cameo and i think the thing which i'm loving the most is the, the twitch so please come and give me your 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 support your um your eyes um uh, on rolanda's journey hit 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 with is not a word but let's use it hit with and um we're looking at the moment it's mondays and wednesdays I, that might be i promise to stick to something eventually but we, i might um still just finding our feet in terms of i don't want to um cross over with other people who, who are um are streaming and stuff like that so i'm just finding my feet but uh definitely um definitely will be picking up the the playthrough as of monday next week hmm. i uh i love to hear that i'm definitely going to be joining um i've been having a blast uh stopping by and having fun with uh with the journey um awesome. make sure to get yourself the perfect valentine's gift with uh, a cameo or a streamly from uh <laughs> from george taylor from roland from yours truly <laughs> it is coming up <laughs> it is it is, it is indeed, yes. A bottle of Arabellum Dry. Purchase one for your loved one. Thank you so much once again. I appreciate it a lot. And um, yeah, I hope to uh, be in touch and perhaps a, uh, a future collab could be, uh, could, be, uh, could be in the midst. Sure thing. Keep rolling those, those nat 20s and uh, we can set it up. That sounds like an absolute blast and pleasure. You have yourself a great evening and... Uh, to your cats as well. Have a good night. <laughs> the truth, God. Thanks so much, and uh, for everyone uh, who tuned in. Speak soon. Take care. Have a great night. Bye. All righty. Well, what a blast that was. Um...